we have two congruences here, x is congruent to 1 mod 3 and x is congruent to 6 mod 7, equivalent to the statement that x when divided by 3 leaves a remainder of 1. The Chinese remainder theorem states that given any number of these congruences, as long as the moduli are co-prime, there exists a unique solution and that you can use this method to find the solution. So here is a visualization of the initial conditions. You can see that the first one, that x is congruent to 1 mod 3, is represented as 1 plus any number i times 3, where we don't know i. And it's also congruent to 6 plus any number i times 7. The visual representation displays these two congruencies as Diophantine equations. It restricts the moduli with a unknown integer and then adds the residual one. So the first step to solving any Chinese remainder theorem problem is to find a number a such that a is congruent to 0 mod 7 and a is congruent to 1 mod 3. If we look at the bottom right corner where the initial conditions were, we can see that a is going to be a number that doesn't affect this second condition because it's 0 mod 7, but does fulfill the first condition because it's going to be 1 mod 3. Here's a visualization of A. You can see it's the same as the visualization for the conditions of the problem, except that the 7 multiplied by the unknown integer i does not have 6 added on because we're trying to find the number that does not affect that equation. So how do we find A? We find A by solving a congruence that starts with the condition that we're trying to meet and then multiplies a different unknown t by 7. We know it has to be a multiple of 7, so by the same concept as the Diophantine equations, we just multiply and restrict that t by 7. In other words, the solution is a multiplicand of 7, which leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. Solving this congruence, we can see that t is 4, because 4 times 7 is 28, and 28 is congruent to 1 mod 3 and 0 mod 7. a therefore is 28. We can check a by plugging it back into the congruences that we set for it. So 28 is indeed congruent to 0 mod 7 and also congruent to 1 mod 3. We can see this visually as 4 blocks of 7 and a number of blocks of 3 with a 1 at the end. These two visualizations represent the same number, 28. The second factor is going to be similar to a but affect the second equation and not the first. Here's the visualization again, and again you can see that it is the same visualization as with the conditions, but with no residual for modulus 3. Finding t again, we see that this time it's easier. 3 times 2 is 6, which in modulus 7 is just 6, and 3 times t is going to be 0 no matter what, which is why we set up the equation like this. B therefore is 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and here's a visualization. 2 blocks of 3 with no residual, or 6 ones. So now that we have A and B, with A affecting only one equation and B affecting the other, we can simply add them to find x. So substituting A plus B for x, we find that x is 34. 34 does end up to be congruent to 1 mod 3 and 6 mod 7. And here's the visualization. So the blue parts are from B, and the red parts are from A. The blue part only affects equation 2, which is mod 7, and the red part only affects equation 1, which is mod 3. Give you a moment to look at that one. Moving on. So to find all x, the Chinese remainder theorem states that the modulus of x is going to be the product of all of the moduli for the conditions. Um, this is because the least common multiple is the product of the moduli by definition because we knew that they were co-prime. Sometimes this allows us to simplify x like in this case. So 34 mod 21 is also 13 mod 21. If we check that, we see that it still holds true. The end. Thanks for watching.